Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to introduce a tremendous leader, clinician, mentor, innovator, and researcher to the podium. Dr. Stephen Amundowitz will now deliver the uh, 2019 ASGE Presidential Address. Steve. Thank you. Good morning. It has been an honor to represent this amazing society for the past year. It is my pleasure to address you this morning and in the next few minutes discuss some of this year's highlights. And what a year it's been. I want to review the transitions, our key accomplishments, and works in progress. I also would like you to understand that none of this could have been accomplished without our amazing staff, society members, committee chairs, and governing board, all who provided outstanding support throughout the year. I'm happy to report that we end this year stronger, more focused, and with new leadership and great potential. This has been a great year of transition for the ASGE. The staff and governing board have been focused on right-sizing our staff for our mission. We began this year with a staff reduction that was necessary to maintain an efficient operation, and while these are always difficult, our ASGE staff has been more than supportive and understanding of the need to reduce cost and improve our efficiency. For the past 16 years, we have been under the direction of the same CEO, Pat Blake. Pat grew our society, expanded its staff, and provided the framework for us to become what we are today. In October last year, Pat informed us that she would be transitioning to a new society, and she is now the CEO of the Heart and Rhythm Society located in Washington, D.C. We thank Pat for all of the efforts she put forth for our society. More importantly, we are very fortunate that she left us with an outstanding leadership team that was willing to devote themselves to taking over the administration of this organization. We're truly blessed to have Barbara Connell, who is familiar with all the operational aspects of the ASGE and ready to accept the challenge of leading this organization. She has been our CEO since January and has done outstanding work to keep the ASGE on task and exceeding its expectations of members and board. She has been supported by our Chief Financial Officer, Sherry Franklin, and our Chief Policy and Learning Officer, Ed Dellert. As our senior leadership team, they have truly excelled. Together with the ASGE directors on this slide, they have provided the guidance to align our objectives and deliver us to where we are today. But it's more than that. Through all of this, these truly amazing staff, they've remained energized, focused, and they truly deserve our thanks and applause. So thank you, staff. Our physician leaders have also contributed significantly to our mission over the past three years. Special thanks are due to our governing board counselors, Michelle Anderson, Sabas Banerjee, and Ken McQuaid, who are completing their terms on the ASGEV governing board. In addition, Dr. Doug Fagel, Gerard Eisenberg, Prasad Iyer, John Maple, Bob Sedlak, and Chris Thompson are completing their terms as committee chairs and we thank all of them for their service to our society as well. I would like to continue some, uh, to highlight some of the accomplishments of this year. Earlier this year, I wrote to you that we were going to focus on several areas, including member engagement. With over 10,500 active national and international members, the ASGE is arguably one of the most successful endoscopic organizations in the world. We are physicians who care for our patients with state-of-the-art flexible endoscopic procedures. Our members have been on the cutting edge of endoscopic technology for over five decades. Our society is respected and has significant brand recognition throughout the world. And our members have shown that they are some of the most skilled and innovative endoscopic educators and protect practitioners in the world. We've expanded our leadership programs as one of the presidential initiatives that both John, Vargo, and I have really uh, been committed to this past year. We began a pilot of GI organizational leadership development known as the GOLD program. This is a, a new leadership program that focuses on members who are at least five years out of fellowship 
and are identified as clinical leaders in either academic or clinical practices. Our inaugural group of 20 ASGE members will complete the program here at DDW for our final event on Monday evening. They have benefited from attendance in our initial one-day program at the GO course last August. This was supplemented by webinars and an ITT meeting throughout the year. Dr. Vargo will continue this program with a new cohort next year, thanks to the generous support from UCB Pharmaceuticals. It has been our hope that we will continue to fund this program in the future as well, for the benefit of our members and for the benefit of the ASGE. With this program and our well-established LEAD program, we are preparing our members for leadership roles in the ASGE and in their practices for years to come. Last year at DDW, we launched our new pilot heartburn prevention, I'm sorry, prevent heartburn cancer campaign. And as Nick Shaheen was just alluding to, this is a, a difficult problem for us to address in this country. This program was supported by CDX Diagnostics. The campaign educates physicians and public about the new paradigm in diagnosing and treating dysplastic Barrett's esophagus before cancer develops. You may remember seeing our public service ads in the airport last year, and I'm sure you've seen the ads this year at DDW. This campaign has given us great visibility, it's brought patients into physicians' offices, and it has honestly saved lives. We've seen over a million impressions on TV, radio, print, and digital media as the result of this campaign, and we thank our colleagues for supporting us in it. We've also focused this year on mobile technologies. You'll see that we have uh, con continued resources from the Beyond Our Walls campaign, which has allowed us to expand the GI Leap program, our educational platform on the web, doubling its content, improving the search function, and making it compatible with Android devices. We've also used these same resources to, camp to fund uh, our, an upgrade of our website. It has significantly improved functionality. I think you'll like it. Visit it at www.asge.org and see this for yourself. Earlier this year, I also mentioned that with the help of Ed Dellert, our Chief Policy and Learning Officer, we were going to direct our efforts towards competency-based education. This is a natural extension of our STAR program with work that was begun over a year ago, and we've identified an industry partner that will help us bring our first product to you at DDW. This diagnostic endoscopic ultrasound training program is designed for ASGE members with established endoscopic skills who wish to add EUS to their practice of endoscopy. Our members have been asking for a way for the practicing physician to acquire new skills that would expand this, their practice. This intensive program involves didactic online learning, hands-on training, followed by a period of performing proctored examinations. The course attendees have to demonstrate competency in endoscopic ultrasound using a standardized metric before receiving their certificate of, comp of completion. Special thanks to Michelle Anderson, Sabas Banerjee, Vanessa Shami, and Karen Woods for coordinating this with Ed Dellert and delivering this project to us. For more information, you can see this on our website and also look at diagnosticeus at asge.org, which provides information about the program and accepts applications. Finally, I'd like to describe our work in progress with the ABIM and maintenance of certification reform. Earlier this week, John Vargo and I attended an ABM internal medicine summit in Philadelphia. We heard a discussion of alternative pathways to maintain board certification for physician leaders in cardiology and medical oncology. These programs offer alternatives to taking the high stakes exam and focus more on lifelong learning than testing. Representatives of the four GI societies will be meeting with ABIM in July of this summer to begin this process for gastroenterology and hepatology. We'll be directing the ABIM to allow us to develop a program that we outlined in our goal proposal that was published last year. We're optimistic that we'll be able to reach a compromise with the ABIM, much like those that our colleagues in cardiology and oncology reached. 
So in summarizing, I'd say that ASGE's future appears bright. We have a worldwide presence. Our leadership for the next five years is truly secure and outstanding. I've listed the presidents in order of their next appearances. I think we can really rest assured that the society is moving forward. We continue to develop innovative programs for education and hands-on training. With our focus, we want to provide everything you need as members for the practice of endoscopy. However, we must and will remain vigilant. As a society, we must monitor and protect the practice of endoscopy. We must prioritize the interest and safety of our patients. We will train the next generation of leaders in endoscopy, and we will continue to provide resources for our members to improve their practices. I will close with special thanks to the families that have supported me this past year. The extra time I spent on behalf of the ASGE was given freely by them, and I am grateful. I especially want to thank my wife, Anne-Marie, my fishing partner and best friend, supporting me for 37 years of marriage. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, I really want to thank you, the members of this society, for placing your trust in me and allowing me to represent you this past year. It's been truly wonderful, and I wish you all the best in a great DDW.